Hi guys, Michael with Open Book Build here. So we get a lot of questions about building homes with ICFs. Today I want to discuss the main reasons I've chosen not to use ICFs for the new homes that I've built. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with ICFs, they're also called insulated concrete forms. These are those blocks that look like Legos that are used to form up and pour concrete walls for new homes. They come with some very nice benefits. They create a concrete wall that's crazy strong. As they have rebar that's lined through it vertically and horizontally, they can withstand hurricane force winds and storm surge. They're also fire resistant. They also create a solid wall that prevents drafts and have a thermal mass to it that improves energy efficiency. And who can't argue with concrete as a building material that will last for hundreds of years? So there's some serious benefits to this method of building. But in this video, I want to share with you the main reasons I've stayed away from them as a builder. And then, you know, you can kind of decide if those are deal breakers for your next project. First thing, if you're going to build with ICFs, you need to have the house plans designed specifically for them. And there are two major reasons for this. First, the thickness of the exterior walls will change from the typical stick framed walls. This means that if you try and use a house plan that was designed for the two by fours or two by sixes with traditional stick framing, when you're actually using ICFs, any dimensions taken off of those exterior walls will be wrong. So your tradespeople will be constantly required to do math, which leads to mistakes. So you might also wanna grow the overall footprint of the house to keep the same square footage as the ICF wall thickness will eat away at the interior living space if it's not adjusted. It can also create problems with staircases and placement of windows and cabinets and doors. You'll also want to include specific details on the house plans for the ICF. So consider the floor joist connection to the ICF concrete wall. The details will need to show how this connection will be made with properly sized and the numbers of fasteners to do that. Now in a traditional wood frame, stick frame construction home, the floor joists just sit on top of the frame wall and it really doesn't need any special detail for the carpenters. Of course, you may instead choose to use the ICF floor panel systems, which will also require special details on the house plans. Now, another detail that should go on the plans are any conduits or sleeves that should run through the wall for wiring or plumbing or vents. You know, coring through these concrete walls after the fact can get quite expensive. Now, these are just a few of the changes that you'll wanna to make to the house plans to prevent mistakes. So if you pay an architect to make these adjustments to some plans that you already have, it can easily cost you an additional two to $3,000. Now, this in and of itself really isn't a deal breaker, but it really is something to consider for your project. Another reason I haven't used ICS for the exterior walls is the moisture given off by the concrete. Now 15 to 20% of the concrete mix is water, which will work its way out of that concrete wall over time. The ICF forms are sandwiched by polystyrene foam on either side with a closed cell structure that reduces the absorption of the moisture and migration of moisture into the insulation. So the water will look for openings in that foam to escape. Now this could be through electrical boxes, vents, or plumbing chases in the walls. So the concern here is that the moisture can damage any materials that are you know, sensitive to moisture or water and can even create mold over time. So it's recommended that several dehumidifiers be run in the new home with ICF walls until the bulk of this moisture goes away. Now this could be a year or more depending on your climate and how you live in your home. Again, this isn't a deal breaker in and of itself, but something that you'll really wanna consider when designing and, and thinking about living in a new ICF home. The third main reason I've steered clear of building homes with ICFs is that the concrete is very unforgiving. If the forms aren't braced just right, or they're set a little bit out of plumb, square, or they're out of level, it can be crazy tough to adjust after pouring. This is why we like concrete so much, because it's tough, right? But if you make a mistake when building with it, the repairs are very difficult. Think concrete saws and grinders and big messes. When I was looking at the videos out there to see what other people's experiences were with ICFs, I found a couple that had several exterior doorway rough openings in their new home that were made too small. Now the adjustment for this in traditional stick framed construction is relatively easy, right? But with concrete, you're looking at some serious work needed with concrete saws, either with either lots of dust and or water on the saw blade, which ends up all over the floor. Another thought is that in the future, if you want to remodel or you know, change the space, make it bigger or add more windows, the process is much more involved with a concrete wall. Costs are another thing to review carefully prior to deciding on an ICF built home. 
the current cost difference for the ICF wall versus the quality sticked framed wall is about 20%. Now this translates to about a 5% difference in the overall cost for the house, which is not too bad if that's where the extra costs ended. But as a builder, I can tell you that the trades I've used that work in and around that ICF wall will charge you more than a traditional stick framed wall. Take the electrician, for example. They need to dig out channels in that foam to, in the wall to run their wiring and electrical boxes. Now, they also will use a sealant around those boxes to secure them to the ICF foam. Now, this takes extra time on the job site. On a side note, my experience with tradespeople is if you can find those that have worked in a home built with ICFs, you'll be better off. I remember years ago when we switched from building our homes with dimensional joists to eye joists, our rough carpenter wanted to charge a premium to install them. Why? Because he feared the unknown. He didn't realize that the eye joists were actually lighter and easier to install than the dimensional lumber that we'd had in the past. In other words, subs like to pad their budget if they're working with something new that might up actually taking them more time. The last issue that's kept me from building with ICFs is strictly the trade supply. Now we're in a crazy high volume building environment which makes it hard to find quality tradespeople in general, right? Layer on top of that a different way of building and your pool of qualified subs willing and able to tackle an ICF house drops significantly, in my market anyway. Again, this isn't a deal breaker by itself, but when you layer all of these issues together, I choose to build the old way, for now anyway. If you choose a general contractor that uses ICFs regularly and has the trade base that's familiar with them, then I say go for it. This is Michael Luckadoo with Open Book Build. Thanks for watching.